Hi there, this is Matt Heffernan. Welcome back to my channel. This is a, another weekly vlog, the Slithy Vlogs series, episode 7. So uh, seven weeks I've been going in here, and uh, once a week in between sort of my main uh, scripted and edited shows, I've uh, been uh, just doing these sort of off-the-cuff uh, less scripted, less edited vlog type videos. And uh, a, a few weeks ago, I uh, did a uh, top five of the uh, current games for the Commander X16 retro computer, which of course, I mean, the, the system hasn't come out yet. So these are all community based games. Uh, there's no commercial games available for it yet, although the, the founder of the project, David Murray, the 8-bit guy, has one that is uh, in the process. I have one that will be a commercial release, but these are uh, all community-based. But now we're, we're going to be going back further in time uh, to the uh, sort of expansion of my channel into doing content for the, uh, well, mainly the Z80 CPU, but also the uh, preferred target for that for my upcoming tutorial series, in uh, the uh, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, of course, as you can see right here. And I've already done a, an episode in my Hello World series on the Speccy, and you were able to see how you can use either BASIC to do a Hello World, which of course is uh, really simple, but you know, using the, the Speccy is a little different than most other, you know, micro Microsoft basic based <laughs> systems. It, it, it's a there, there's a bit of a learning curve trying to figure out how how the keys work, especially if you're not using an, a Sinclair keyboard to do it with. Because if you're just using a modern computer with all all the labeling that's on those original Sinclair computers, it's a little confusing. So so yeah, there's that, and then of course there was doing it in assembly language. And uh, we'll see how uh, you like that. I, I actually haven't put it out publicly yet, but at the time I'm recording this, this is the night before. But uh, I, I hope that does nearly as well as the uh, first two Z80 uh, videos did. They've done really phenomenally well, and I thank you all for, for your support. And it, it's really shown that there's a huge interest here for Z80 and also Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Uh, content, even though there were uh, a lot of people on these uh, videos saying, "Why didn't you? Why aren't you focusing on this or that Z80 platform?" And I, I think I made the 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 reasons of that clear. So yeah, people were asking, "So why didn't you cover, say, the MSX? That was widely popular, and as I said in my video, it was widely popular in Japan." But not exclusively Japan. That's really the base of its operations, uh, because you had all these different Japanese computer makers like Sony, and uh, you know all these other ones. But Sony was Sony was the big one. They were uh, making MSX computers primarily for the Japanese market. But there were other markets that got them too, other European markets. But uh, as far as English speaking markets, they did not have a lot of penetration. And whereas the the Speccy had uh, a very large percentage of the UK market, uh, along with several other European countries, they they failed in America trying to release it in the uh, as the Timex uh, Sinclair series. Uh, they had the the ZX81 clone and then the Spectrum clone, although not really clones, Timex was the manufacturer of all of these systems, even the, the proper Sinclair uh, British computers. But it, it just, it didn't work out in the States. And, uh, but it did work out very well. And there's a gigantic library. And the, the problem comes if I'm trying to think of, well, what's the top five games for the ZX Spectrum? And that's not an easy thing to do. With my Commander X16 video, I had a very concrete metrics to go on based on, on the uh, popularity of these particular community developed games, how many people were downloading them. Uh, that, that was the, the single metric that was good enough to do. But that's, that's a lot harder to do with the Spectrum because there's, uh, first of all, a much wider audience and these are games for the, and in fact, all the games I'm covering here 
were uh, contemporary games. These none of these are homebrew games that have been come out in more recent years. These were commercially released games, all from the early to mid '80s. The basically the the height of the popularity of the ZX Spectrum, and they came on cassette tape, and you would have had to, to go and buy them at the store. And some of them had copy protection features that you'd have to get around. Um, a, usually having some sort of weird device, uh, as we're going to talk about in a bit. And and so, yeah, so people paid real money for these. And so these are games that are nearly 40 years old, and there's a lot of nostalgia wrapped up in them. But I, I went through using a very rigorous research process called Googling and looking for the first 10 ranked lists of Spectrum games I could find. And... That was it. So assuming that our uh, all-knowing, all-seeing overlords who are gracious enough to give me a, a few trinkets of the, the massive ad revenues that they get for my videos and, of course, everybody else's, but I just have to put my faith in them that they are providing me and curating for me the most important voices in the uh, retro community that are going about doing these rankings. So I, I went, uh, being the uh, patriotic American that I am, I used the uh, AP polling ranking, uh, as we do for college uh, football, uh, which is uh, not the kind of football that the British folks would be uh, thinking of, and uh, basketball rankings. I'll, I'll use this sort of method where everybody fills out a ballot and you sort of reverse the order of the numbers and that's how many points you get. So uh, based on that, I try to be as objective as possible. I had never played any of these games. In fact, uh, they are, a lot of them are very different. I've never played any games quite like them. Uh, I think some people might have uh, uh, thought in, in the content that the fact that I never uh, actually beheld a ZX Spectrum in my life or played any of these games meant that I was some whippersnapper. Maybe they think I'm younger than my... <laughs> <laughs> then my face would obviously lead them to. They hear my voice and think I'm a lot younger. But no, I am uh, definitely of the age where I would have been the uh, target market for these games when they came out in the in the early to mid '80s. So I just it just by virtue of growing up in America, these games did not exist as far as I knew. I knew the games uh, that were for the Commodore 64 that my friends had. I had games for the systems that I had. But yeah, these were all brand new for me. So I'm going in entirely without prejudice. I All I've done with each of these games is just make sure that they work on my emulator. And I'm going to be giving you my reactions in a more or less real time to what these games are like. So without further ado, Let's go to number five, and that is Night Lore by Ultimate Play the Game, and it was released in 1984, and here is what the actual cassette insert looked like, and it is a, uh, as you can probably guess, this is sort of a Dungeons and Dragons type uh, game, a, uh, you're, you know, uh, fighting off monsters and, and things like that. So let's go right into it. Let's see what Night Lore is all about. So I'm going to fire that up in my, the Zasarix emulator. A little smart load here. So I've got that in number five. Here's Night Lore. Ah, and here we see the ultra realism of loading from the tape. And some of these tape files... <laughs> They have uh, this uh, more realistic recreation of what it was like to load these games from tape. So let's sit here and watch it. Of course, I'll speed it up a bit so you don't have to wait quite so long. All right. There we go. That's a very nice splash screen. This is coming up mid tape load. <laughs> I think I may have to uh, uh, get this uh, down a bit here. Let's. Uh... So yeah. So this was a uh, a pretty good splash screen 
uh, for the time. So, of course, it took so long to download these games. We were still only at about 45% here that uh, as soon as it could actually load a splash screen, it, it would. And with the Spectrum, if, if you're completely new to it, the way that it worked was the, uh, the border of the display, the part that you couldn't really control as part of the bitmap, it would uh, change color as it received data uh, from the, uh, the tape interface. And that tape interface, it was just plain audio. You could use any uh, just standard tape recorder, and you could just uh, plug the sound coming out of that tape recorder uh, into the spectrum and uh, press play on the tape when you uh, do the load command and it would play that back and it would change these uh, back the background color uh, just uh, periodically and you can see it's uh, doing it a, a whole bunch of times per scan frame which is why you get the different colors and they sort of change it at random parts that's where it's during the scan it's changing the border color so it, it's it's not really rendering uh, stripes. This is by by virtue of that background color changing uh, several times, uh, a whole bunch of times. Looks like probably about fifty times or so in the course of just one scan frame. And of course, being the ZX Spectrum, we're talking about a pale interface, a, a, a pale RF signal. So it is a fifty hertz. Uh, signal, so we're doing a, uh, a vertical sync 50 times a second. Oh, hey, and there we go. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, make this a little louder so we can hear the beepage. So here, this is an emulation of the uh, piezoelectric buzzer that's in there. All right, it's <laughs> that's kind of done. So you could make music for it by controlling. Uh, you can't control the pitch other than turning it on and off at a, at a, at an actual frequency, and then you have those pulse frequencies, and you could, uh, you know, change the duty cycle just by having them on or off longer <laughs> in each cycle. It was really that simple. Um, so. But of course, that meant there was only one amplitude. There was no uh, no volume control on the spectrum. All right. So for Night Lore, I'm just going to use the, the keyboard. So one's already selected. I'll hit zero to start the game. Oh, there we go. All right. So from what I've seen so far, you start out as this Night Explorer. He is not unlike the uh, Chase Fault character I have. I can kind. He's got a pith helmet and everything, so already this is obviously a game that uh, is. A, oh, and then you can see here the moon comes out and he apparently turns into a werewolf. So yeah, this makes good use of the uh, the spectrum colors. So so Z and X moves around and then A or S will make a move forward, whatever direction he's going. So here I can see. Oh, I go in there, and immediately I'm kidding. <laughs> Eaten by some ghost. And I mean get out of here. I can't. Okay. Ah, uh, ghost. Oh, okay. <laughs> As you can see, oh I am not I am not doing well at this game at all. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> Overall rating poor. Okay. Uh, I can, let me try one more thing in there. So there's the keyboard. All right. Let me try going in a way that doesn't kill me. Maybe this way won't kill me. All right. So, oh, here we go. A little portico skate. Oh, look at that. Ha! Huh. Made it through that one. All right. Oh, now we got a bunch of, uh, things. Okay. Looks like I managed to get through there before they fell. Maybe this way. This way won't. Maybe this way won't kill me so quick. Oh, maybe it will. I don't know. Oh, oh, oh! Come on, uh, magic! Please don't kill me so hard. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. I can't. That okay. That's not working at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm still werewolf. I, I might be changing back here soon. Let me try walking through this way. All right. Well, I guess we got some mice on. There, there's a cup. Maybe I should go and get that cup. 
I mean, definitely very cute. Let's see if I pick it up. Yes, it will let me pick it up. Oh, but now I, uh, let's see. Uh, can I get around here? <laughs> oh, but now I'm the wolf, turning the wolf again. So yeah, a, a little confusing. Uh, can I jump? The the jump is what, QW, right? No, oh, that didn't work at all. But at least, hey, look, I still got the cup. And maybe I can go. Oh, oh let's go. Nope. And yeah, so that's that's a little annoying. And I'll go through here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll go through here. Okay, that guy is, but he's probably gonna kill me. So he looks more like a knight than my guy, who's definitely more of the adventurer in a pith helmet sort. Okay. I think I hit the A. Oh. Okay. Oh, hey, look at that. I'm getting through. Oh, it looks like shift is pausing me. I keep hitting that shift button by accident. Oh, and then I'm just getting killed by fire. Okay. Uh, can I can I time it where I don't get hit by fire immediately? Okay, again. All right. I mean, this is cute. I mean, I, I, I like... Oh, I keep, I keep hitting the shift. I want to hit that. Maybe I need to try hitting S instead of for going forward. So, yeah, I mean, definitely uh, reminiscent of something. So, yeah, I mean, I guess you just go around here. Oh, look. Then there's a bottle. Can I get that bottle without killing myself? I don't know. Maybe I won't try. <laughs> but so yeah, so that's night lore. So yeah, it looks cute. Like I said, I, I think the graphics are interesting. They're keeping it to the one color in the main field of play, but then having little splashes of color down at the bottom. And, and it, it allows you to, you know, not have like weird color artifacts at the top. So you're you're keeping each little eight by eight segment in just some color on black. And even though they, they, they did kind of switch it up for that splash screen, obviously that's a lot harder when you're dealing with uh, with graphics that are in motion. Like this little sun here, you can see the extreme ends of the sun go from yellow to red, and that sort of messes things up. <laughs> so, so that's Night Lore. And uh, let me go uh, back to the slides. So number five is Night Lore, and uh, number four is Jetpack, also by Ultimate Play the Game in uh, 1983 and uh so let's go let's go take a look at jetpack our our cousin of the, <laughs> the night lore game so i can hit f5 bring that up and i can i'll go down to directory number four and there's jetpack now if this jetpack file i think this one loads a bit faster so it says it's loading and it just gives me that little screen, says Jetpack is loading. But again, uh, a really uh, cool looking um, splash screen. Not as much of switching up the paper uh, colors like the uh, the Night Lore one did. But all right, so it looks like we already have one player keyboard already set. I have my uh, cheat sheet here <laughs> saying how this works. So it's again, Z and X for going right and left, uh, and then ANS to fire, and then there's the thrust. And this was a little uh, fiddly and weird last time I tried it. Let's see if I can get this to work again this time. All right. Ooh, yeah. Okay, and uh, no, okay. Oh, yep. <laughs> there we go. So I'm able to get those little meteors before they kill me. And I know there was a way to get to get it to, to go up and it didn't seem very consistent. So I don't know if uh, <laughs> this is not what is normal because like to, for the like little jetpack guy to actually have his 
jetpack to happen. Okay, oh, there we go. That's right. Okay, Q. That's right. Q makes the jetpack go up. So it looks like here I can kind of come up around here. And let's see. Oh, 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 and then I, okay. So I think basically you have to assemble this rocket. And I've never come close to assembling one of these rockets. Uh, but yeah, so a very you know basic kind of uh, platform game uh, with all these, oh, yeah. And it just wants to kill you. It wants to kill you dead real quick. This is a game that my kids would say is totally unfair and stupid. <laughs> so, uh, and I don't know if I would uh, disagree with them there. Okay, so again, so I know there's a way oh, to sort of push that off. And like a, yeah, was, oh crap. All right, so so yeah, so there's Jetpack. Uh, I mean, graphically not too interesting. I think not nearly as as nice looking as uh, as Night Lore, but definitely more of a regular arcade game. But it's so punishing that is just. I mean, you know, maybe if I was uh, a, like I, I was a kid in 1983, that I probably would have invested time in doing this. But now it's like, no, that's just that's just way too hard just to assemble a rocket. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, I would I would definitely put Night Lore uh, ahead of this one if, if it was my list. But anyway, let's uh, let's go back to our our top 5. So, Night Lore, Jetpack, and then Chucky Egg by the very professional sounding A&F Software uh, coming out in 1984 and this uh, <laughs> the cassette label is very interesting. It's a, a boot stomping an egg with very uh, blue-tinted yolks or, or, or whites uh, coming out of the egg. As he's stomping the egg and the chicken looks on, and he's, he's, he's not happy about that. He is not happy about this boot smashing the eggs. So let's, let's see what Chucky Egg is about. And let's, uh, let's load that one up. That's in our number three slot. Chucky Egg. See how long this one takes to load. Not long at all. Boom, there it goes. Oh, and the chicken dance. You know? <laughs> I thought only in America did we have to suffer through the chicken dance, but no, that is a, that's an international crisis, really. We're, we're having to all deal with that. So we have S to start game, R to redefine keys, I for instructions. So I want I for instructions. The cursor keys. So now I'm in those cursor keys. And I think then for jump, it's four or nine. And S to start. One player. Let's see. Okay. Now the control is much better, but still, it's real super fiddly, like beyond fiddly. So I gotta kind of jump off the ladder. If I wanna get... Yeah, trying to get on the ladder, I gotta be really uh, careful. All right. That's right. So, yeah, those aren't... I can't get them from underneath. So I can go up here. And I think I can jump off the ledge here. Yeah. There we go. And I got the last egg. I think the last little triangle, I guess that's feed. <laughs> I don't know. So I think I just need to get the eggs. Uh, let me get this egg. Oh, I didn't manage to jump. All right, we'll get those eggs. I mean, this isn't too bad. This is, you know, very much like a Donkey Kong, Kong kind of uh, real super old school platformer. 
Although this is what, 1983, 84? I mean, over in, uh, over in Japan, they, they were starting to make like Mega Man and <laughs> Super Mario Brothers pretty soon after this. But yeah, so, I mean, this one, not so punishingly horrible, <laughs> right? <laughs> Even though this is difficult. But yeah, definitely sort of like a Donkey Kong Jr. type of... Oh! We'll see if I can jump on that elevator before I, I finally give up on this one. Right, and... Oh, hey, look, I made it. Oh, that was very sad. All right. I think that's all I'm going to do for Chucky Egg. That was quite, that was quite something. All right. So, so after Chucky Egg, even better is Elite came in at number two in this highly scientific process that came out in 1985 for Firebirds. So definitely one of the uh, older uh, or rather later games in sort of the, the heyday of the ZX Spectrum. And of course, Elite is a game that I'm somewhat familiar with because it, it was also popular for the, the Commodore 64, although uh, uh, that would have been probably more for older kids at that time. I was probably a bit young for that. This is a very sophisticated game, I know. I'm not going to try to play a whole lot of it right now, <laughs> but... Uh, let me just uh, load it up, and I think this one also uh, can take a while. And also, this is one that was uh, copy protected. So the original uh, tape game, I can't really play because I have no means of getting around the copy protection. All right, let's, let's bring this down a bit. So, yeah. I have uh, no way of getting around that copy protection. It puts up like some sort of weird pattern. As you can see here, it looks like uh, some uh, weird Russian <laughs> thing. Is uh, somebody in Russia managed to uh, crack Elite and get around that? And yeah, so uh, apparently with the original Elite, there was this weird uh, plastic lens thing that you could look at this opening code on and be able it it, it did whatever the uh, exact right distortion was that was required to turn these weird blobby things into letters but uh yeah i'm not uh <laughs> i'm not getting that here but all right now we're now we're seeing that really impressive splash screen for elite so yeah there there it is now, of course, Elite is a space trading game. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, there's a lot of folks that have uh, played Elite in uh, in longer YouTube videos, probably people Twitch streaming it. It, it's a, it continues to be a very uh, popular space trading game, especially because it is uh, available for both the ZX Spectrum and the Commodore 64 and really pushed the limits of uh, both of those machines in terms of the sophistication that one of those games could have. And, uh, and definitely uh, with the, uh, the Spectrum version, you are, are really uh, looking at its ability to be able to, to do bitmap graphics really well. Uh, even with a limited color palette, but even on the Commodore 64, Elite was basically just white on black. There wasn't a whole lot of color to it. So here we go. We can see this uh, this tape has more of a multicolored <laughs> background changing, and we're only at forty one percent. So we'll uh, we'll speed this up and uh, get through it a lot faster. Oh, also, I should mention I am going to put up this uh, cheat sheet over here. These uh, instructions, so I'm not totally lost. But again, like I said, I'm not really going to play this game. But yeah, it's very complicated. And if I come over here and scroll, you can see it's it's a very very sophisticated game. It even shows you what the different enemy ships can look like. 
but we're, we're going to see if I can at least get something to happen with this. I, I really did little more than to make sure that this version of the tape was not copy protected, but I, I didn't really get into playing the game. So we'll see. We'll see if I can make it do much of anything to get you a view of what these game of what the game looks like. I think that would be interesting if any of you folks know uh, a bit of the inside of that. Uh, why Elite changed and it had sort of a solid tone and the background didn't change for a while, and then it sort of went back to this. What what's it doing there? Is it loading a separate file? Uh, it. I, I really don't know much of anything about what's going on behind the scenes there. But if you do, please uh, comment below. And if you think also any of my assessments are way off, please feel free to make yourselves known. And, uh, and after we see what the next uh, game is, if uh, you think something was seriously missed out, if I do not have a good read on the pulse of the Internet... <laughs> of what the best games are. Because, uh, again, I'm sure it's a very subjective thing and everybody has their own pet games. But this is these seem to be widely admired. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. All right, look at that. So, we, are elite. we can see here, like, a 3D model <laughs> rotating in space. That would have just blown your mind in 1985 to see that on a little Specky or a Commodore 64. No games had anything like that. No sort of uh, polygons. And I mean, it's it's smooth. We're not we're not getting uh, 50 frames a second or even 25 frames a second out of this, but it looks really nice. And uh, so, yeah, and very similar to how it looks on the Commodore. So, yeah, we're going to load a new commander. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I guess I'm Commander Jameson. That's not too bad. I I, I like Jamesons. So, uh, maybe if I was Commander Tullamore Dew, that would be even better. All right, so I've got a front pulse laser. I've got the present system is a lathe. My hypersonics, hyperspace system is a lathe. Uh, I've got seven light years worth of fuel, 100 credits of cash. My legal status is clean, baby. And my rating is harmless. <laughs> That's how much they know me. All right. All right. Inventory. Again, seven lights of fuels and the cash. All right. Okay, so now what? Oh, oh, looks like... I'm going through a wormhole. And there we go. All right. So now let me see uh, if I can do a clockwise roll or anti clockwise roll. Clockwise roll. Anti clockwise. That's how you know it's British. It says anti clockwise instead of uh, uh, counterclockwise. So dive S. Oh, ooh, okay. Okay. And climb X. Wow. I mean, that is. That's really smooth. Really, really smooth. I mean, you even get sort of the feel of that. So I guess now what I, uh, I find increase speed. Okay, I don't know, how do I how do I like get someplace? I, I have no idea what I'm doing, but hey. It, it seems to work really, really nice in terms of the controls. If I have hit fire, oh, look at those lasers. Uh, if I can target them, I have, I have nothing to target it on. But here, I can look at my back view. What's out the back? Oh, I'm, well, I'm obviously flying away from someplace. Uh, if I look at the uh, left view, all right, I'm not passing by anything interesting. Right view. No, back to the front view. Uh, yeah. So I don't know where do I? How do I find some place? Oh, if I say D, I'll get distance to system. All right. So D. Oh, what we got here? D. All right. I I don't know. 
So do I try... Oh, and I died. I have no idea why. All right, so there's Elite. <laughs> Uh, maybe someday I'll invest some time in, in figuring that out. But that is, this is not a, uh, going to be a, a, uh, a small learning curve. <laughs> this is a, a very steep learning curve, obviously. So, yeah, I never, I never played for the Commodore 64. I never had one of my own. And again, that was really more of a, uh, a game for teenagers and adults when I was a preteen. So... That was uh, not happening so much. And the number one, Manic Miner, came out by another very professional-sounding company called Software Projects in 1983. And they had an uh, M.C. Escher-type impossible triangle as their logo. I appreciate that. So let's see what Manic Miner is about. We'll get uh, back to our emulator. Let's get our more neutral background going. And here we go. Let's take a look at that. Number one, Manic Miner. All right. Again, loading this from another virtual tape. Oh, and there we go. It loads pretty quick. So... This is quite the music. So it looks like they're, you know, trying to murder Johannes Strauss with some sort of uh, electronic death ray. And there we go. Manic Miner, copyright Bug Bite Limited, 1983. Sorry, Bug Bite and Matthew Smith. Uh, I'm guessing that's not the Doctor Who Matthew Smith. I don't think he was born yet in 1983. All right, so let's see. Guide Miner Willie through 20 lethal caverns, and I have my cheat sheet too. So this one is a pretty simple one. Uh, it's Q and W and then space jump. It looks like I've already died. All right. So, all right. All right, so there's my space. And if I recall correctly, yes, the plants will kill me. So I've got to, and he'll kill me too. Everything kills me. Oh, and then, oh, man, boot comes out of nowhere and kills me. And then they start murdering Strauss again. And all right, let's get, uh, oh, Q&W, that's right, Q&W. All right, we got to wait for that. We are chicken or duck thing. Get around. Oh, and that falls out behind me. And then I get a key. Keys are always important. So I'm going to want a key. Oh, and I got like a moving platform up there. And I need to get over that and get over that. And oh, and I landed on the duck again. Oh, and the I don't even get to keep the key. Oh, that's that's not okay. That's not okay, Manic Miner. All right. All right, so I got this platform. Oh, sheesh. You know, I try not to curse on my channel. This game is going to make it difficult. <laughs> All right. So there. There's the greatest... <laughs> Sex Spectrum game of all time. Manic Miner. It's got quite the title screen. And it, it changes that background color even after you finished loading it. And then does just horrible things with the buzzer to go back between the music and this weird sound effect. And good old Miner Willie. Yep, so there you go. That's Manic Miner, the greatest game ever made. So question is, can I make a game to live up to this rich tapestry of uh, tradition? And I don't know. We'll see. 
<laughs> we'll see where my efforts go with this platform. And uh, it's interesting here, this is the only one I've seen so far that has an uh, attract mode like this. So it looks like obviously at some point there are penguins and not just some weird wind up, ru wind up duck. There's oh, ostriches, uh, although it's not quite joust. Oh, seals with balls spinning on their noses. I mean, the graphics, it, it, they're evocative. Those, oh, obviously toilets, <laughs> right? So... I mean, they do a good job. Oh, that's there's no uh, no IP violation there. I couldn't tell what those those are original characters. And then oh, kangaroos, wow. So yeah, I mean, they do a good job of splitting up the screen. Those are like what stinky onions or something. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, they do a good job of uh, containing these different things within these areas where they're not having all sorts of uh, color bleed. They're able to keep the colors nice and discreet. So I mean, those are those are the good things. Those are, are some of the real challenges and trying to make games work around those challenges so that they, you know, can look pretty nice because it's obviously very hard to make a game look nice for the Spectrum. And uh, there we go. Those are the greatest ones of all time. So that's that's all I got for you in this video. Uh, let me know what you think the, the best game ever or you, what your top five is. By all means, let me know. Because, uh, again, I, I am coming at this as a uh, complete noob to the whole ZX Spectrum world. And I'm missing out on some of these really great games. Uh, there were others that were up like towards the top ten uh, looking at across... All, all these different uh, uh, the, these different polls and uh, just random rankings that I found. Uh, some folks coming up with entirely different games from number one uh, that didn't make the top five because they they were like alone in thinking that was the greatest one. So what what do you think? Let me know. And uh, I I hope you like this again. You know, sort of a shaggy dog type vlog. And just watching me fail at playing uh, video games that came out when I was a child <laughs> that I didn't know exist until I was an adult and should have known better. But there you go. Uh, thanks. And, and, you know, like these folks here, uh, my patrons, they're seeing this early. They're going to see this a, a few days early. And if you'd like to see my videos uh, uh, much earlier and see a lot of exclusive content, come join us on Patreon. Got the link right there and in the description. And I hope you join me for my next episode. <clears throat> if you already saw the uh, Hello Specky video, that's a bit of a preview for what the larger uh, Z80 assembly tutorial targeting the Spectrum is going to look like, uh, generally in that style. And we'll be going through all the different concepts right from square one, how to program an assembly language uh, on the Z80 with uh, the tool chain that I had shown in that video and... Uh, and then eventually being able to make a game like this. Maybe uh, somebody else uh, could make a game uh, looking at uh, once they learn how to, you know, exploit the system to make a game even better than these top five. And I I'm certainly going to try myself. I have no idea what I'm going to make, but I'm definitely going to make a lot of small programs that uh, people should be able to follow along to and learn how to learn how to program for themselves in assembly language because that's what these old pl platforms are, are really great for. So I thank you, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.